And now you want to up, up your belief of that. And you do that through meditation, through more and more apprehending sores, getting get a bigger sense of that bigger infinite reality that everything really coexists and being less and less distracted and focused down the tunnel of your physical eye. So I think that the essence of my suffering comes down to the concept of time. So nice. and until I realize, until I can manifest I am, it will require some extra amount of human time. So during this time, that might be the whole of my life, I'm afraid that I won't be able to express my creative potential. So this is the root of my suffering because if, if I had infinite amount as, as a human, infinite amount of time as a human, then I could be happy in my suffering because I would know that at one point I could um, enjoy all the things that I desire to create. Um, but now because I know that I have very limited time, this, um, this uh, brings me a lot of anxiety and fear that I won't be able to make it until um, it's too late, like as a human being. Yeah, so you're talking about physical death, right? That you see that as it's your. It's not limited. about the death per se, uh, but I, more I, like I the different so things that you can do when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, I would not need a bank account uh, that it's full when I'm 80 years old. I would like to have it now. So I don't know how I can make human time be relevant. To, to my mission to, to accomplish may this two go together hand in hand yeah so if you remember that you are creating or attracting whatever you're vibrating right now then you you can realize you will have to soften soften your idea about time just deactivate it more and more in your vibration so that things can come into your life at an accelerated pace because every time you're thinking, oh, the time, oh, when I'm 80, oh, oh, you're delaying what's already accomplished for you in source. And your feeling state will feel much better when you, re when you pause your thinking for a bit and you reconnect to source or the vortex, if you will, your vibrational reality where everything you truly desire already has been organized for you in perfect alignment. If you have faith in that, you will start to feel it. When you live from that feeling of it, you're now becomes pleasurable because you're living from the fulfilled state of being and then physical reality will catch up with it it will speed up its manifestation of that but if we get if we start keeping score of what's happening in physical reality we lose our connection we actually delay the manifestation so we also want to shift our priority from what manifests to how we feel our state of consciousness if you can make it more important for yourself that you feel really connected to the reality that's already created for you vibrationally, if you can enjoy it at that level, it will speed up very much. Just continue to enjoy it in your imagined reality, in your frequency. Okay, I can try. I'm just afraid that, you know, this step two, when you want to fulfill something, step one, step two, step three, that mm -hmm. step two might take too much time. What? No, do you understand step two? Step two is you cannot do step two. Step one is you launch a desire, typically because you figure out what you don't want, therefore you realize what you do want. That's the launching of a rocket with desire. Step two is your vortex or source, you could say, receives it. It hears it. God hears your demand. God hears your decree. God hears your desire. God exists at a level of unimaginable intelligence. It knows all the timelines, all the probabilities, all the experiences. It, it creates everything, remember? It puts Earth in its orbit. It makes the galaxy spin. God is God. God is all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent. There's nothing God cannot create. So God hears your desire. So step two is it's instantly given. Step one is ask. Step two is it is given. You can't do or undo that or not do that or delay it. It's instant. What you're talking about is step three. What you're dealing with is moving away from step one and into step three. 
you can't do step two. It's not up to you. You can only do step three, which is get into the, the receptive mode connect to your vortex, connect to where the reality already exists of what you desired through the contrast of step one. So you see your bank account, oh, step one, fuck, I don't like this. So your subconscious mind knows what you do want. All this data, very precise data, more than you can ever think or visualize consciously. It knows exactly what you mean. It knows exactly what you want. It knows exactly what you're asking for. That's immediately integrated with the entire database of your vibrational reality. And now it's there for you. And on a timeless plane, it actually already really exists. And you can connect to this in meditation and through allowance and through positive thoughts. And so the more you raise your frequency in faith that it already is given, that it already exists, and that the way it comes into physical space time is just an illusory process that will happen, especially if you stay faithful to the reality where it already exists. Now your job is to move your vibration from what didn't feel good, which launched the desire, and to match what has been accomplished in step two for you, by source, not by you, by source, by your real you. So now you want to connect to your real you and assume the man or woman you already are. Stay in that assumption. Stay firm in that faith. Fuck your observation of your bank account. Stop looking it up. Meditate on your desired reality already having been accomplished. Discipline yourself in a positive way. Focus, 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 focus. It's the only way. It's the only way you're going to be receiving what has already been given. Up, 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 have faith, be happy, be happy, be happy, be happy, be happy. It's already done, it's already done. Just assume it and trust in the house and the winds being up to God, not up to you. You could never do it on your own. You could never do it with your physical mind. So don't try to do it with your physical mind. You couldn't plan it out in your scheduler. So don't try to plan it out in your scheduler. As Neville Goddard says, every conception has its appointed time, but it will happen. And it will happen no later than it then it needs to happen when it has its appointed time. All you have to do is stay in the assumption that it's already the case and not look at the steps in between. Be blind to the facts. Stay in your imagination slash your faith and just do your thing. Go about your day-to-day -day business having complete faith that he has heard you, that it has heard you, that it has been organized already. And it wants to come into your physical experience you just have to feel like it already is. That's the way. That's the key frequency to tune into. It already is here. And then stop looking at the facts. You got to untrain yourself or detrain yourself to not look at the physical circumstances. That's the paradox, but that's the training to be in the creator seat. You can't be in the creator seat if you look at the world like you're a fucking physical human being with like only two hands and two feet. That doesn't feel very good. Why? Because your inner being knows that's not what you are. You got to look the way your inner being looks at the world. It already exists. So you have it. You have it. Ooh. So you're already, you're already fulfilled. You're not lacking it. You're just looking at physical reality too much. That's why you think you don't have it yet. That's why you don't see it. But you already have it. It's a fact. You already are it. You want to get aligned to that because then if you're the frequency of it, you can perceive it on all levels. It can flow into your experience. But you got to persevere. Persist in the imagined reality being already the case. Yeah, but uh, while you're persevering on something, like human time also goes by. So that's the main problem. Where, where does this human time thing, why does it seem so real to you? Does it disable because biology you? is very specific, human biology is very specific. So there are certain things that you can do at certain ages. What do you want and, to do that you can't do anymore? Sorry? What do you want to do so badly that you cannot do anymore? It's not that I cannot do it. It's just that it's like 
The good thing is to have things at the right time. If you have something when you don't need it or you cannot handle it or you don't want it anymore, then it's... But at the root of this, you have a flawed premise that something could be lacking at the right time. And you're trying to figure this out. You're trying to do God's job on his behalf. You're trying to act like your source in a physical body, which you are essentially, but you know what I mean? You're trying to take on God's job with your physical mind from a linear time point, time bound point of view. The only way to dissolve this love is to, well, you can dissolve the concept of time, see through it. It doesn't exist. You're just continually imagining the vibration of a lack of time. And therefore you're feeling like it's real. It's not my experience. I know what it's like. I can, I can go there, but it's not my normal experience because I don't have that active vibration. I have, des I have deconstructed that concept of time. So can you try to find time? You won't find it anywhere. All you find is this eternal, delicious, present experience of being combined with whatever you imagine it to be in this moment, whatever you assume it to be in this moment. There's this eternal play field that knows no time. It's ever fresh. It's ever fresh. It's ever fresh. You're looking at yourself like your physical body. Right? Yes. Yeah, don't, don't look at yourself like your physical body. Because if you look deeper, you see all that you really experience is consciousness right now. Being aware of an imagined problem or an imagined solution or an imagined reality. What's your actual direct experience? Moment to moment to moment to moment. If you look deeply, what can you actually say for sure are you truly experiencing right now? Are you right now, if you look deep, are you experiencing time or are you experiencing presence? presence are you experiencing the decay of the body or are you experiencing i am i exist both so you're telling me you are right now experiencing the slow decay of the physical body like you are actually experiencing a physical body that's right now decaying that's your direct experience um or or are you I conscious? think of it. I don't know. Okay, I, I, I so think what of is it. your actual experience? Is I'm having a thought. My experience is just talking to you. So I don't. I don't. <laughs> my but you're right actual, now. Your actual experience is not talking to me. Your actual experience is being conscious of imagining hearing me speak. Okay. Just happening in the eternal playing field that does not know time or age. Okay. Nor is there a physical body in that playground. You have to actually like go look and like assume and, blah, 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 and like, oh yeah, I'm a physical body. But before that, when you're just fresh in the moment, alert, aware, conscious of what you're imagining, your actual experience does not consist of a physical body, nor of time, nor of age, nor of lack or limitation. It's only whatever you're imagining right now. You're always dancing in the field of presence. So pay more close attention to what you're imagining Realize that you're imagining it inside of your imagining of it. You're not actually an observer of physical reality. Even that is imagined. And connecting in meditation, slowing the thoughts, connecting to a deeper state of consciousness allows you to see this more easily. Connecting to that sense of everything I've ever wanted has been heard and organized in a level of reality above what I currently perceive, a level of reality that knows no time, that knows no limitation. It only has one goal, which is expansion, and everything is possible in God. And it's created for me, and I can connect to it and feel it as real as it would be physically, even more real. So you can be more fulfilled right now than you would be if your bank account was full in physical reality. You can actually experience the reality of it. And this is not to fool you, like so that you all, that you no longer care about your physical reality. This is actually me saying, what you're looking for is the fulfillment, the feeling of power, the feeling of freedom, the feeling of abundance, the feeling of, yes, the feeling of I'm experiencing my fulfillment, my potential, right? Everything you want is already here. Start experiencing it now. Strengthen that muscle. It's just an underdeveloped muscle. Start strengthening it. 
and you will make quick progress, I promise. But you got to want it. You got to want to feel good more than you want to have money in your bank account. And the way to do that is to have faith that it's already in your bank account, in your vibrational reality, that there's infinite parallel realities. They all coexist. So right now, somewhere, you're filthy fucking rich. You, right now, are filthy fucking rich. Doesn't that feel good to know? <laughs> that it's already taken care of. You don't have to stress. You don't have to manage. You don't have to do it yourself. You already are filthy fucking rich. Doesn't that feel great? Sure. And now you want to up, up your belief of that. And you do that through meditation, through more and more apprehending sores, getting get a bigger sense of that bigger infinite reality that everything really coexists and being less and less distracted and focused down the tunnel of your physical eyes. Disconnect from the physical senses and start to re-embrace the power of ever-present imagination. <laughs>